Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe der Erfolgssendung zusammengebaut Late Night. Heute mit einer ganz besonderen Sendung, denn wir haben herausragende Gäste zu Gast. Hier in der Sendung heute Abend die beiden Lego-Designer, Mike Psyche und Karl Merriam. Und dieses Auto stammt aus deren Schmiede. Also darüber reden wir gleich. Aber zunächst natürlich Late Night typisch will ich die Sidekick-Legende hier ins Studio holen. Er ist heute Abend mit uns, hat die Zeit gefunden, obwohl der Terminplan sehr, sehr voll ist. Heute Abend mit uns die Legende, Matthias, der Präsident Kuhnt. Ich grüße dich, Matthias. Grüß dich, Andres. Ja. Gut siehst du aus. Ist alles, alles entspannt bei dir? Schnee ist ja, weg? Fast alles gut. Ja, fast alles weg. Ist noch ein bisschen was da. Reste, aber ja. Ja, hast, hast du alles aufgegessen. Gut, und jetzt kommt hier natürlich auch noch der Bandleader, der für die gute Stimmung sorgt heute Abend. Michael Kloppo-Kopp. Ich grüße dich, Michael. Hallo Leute von Norden bis Süden, von Osten bis Westen und so weiter. Michael, schön, dass du auch die Zeit gefunden hast. Aus Wien bist du zugeschaltet. Und äh, mit euch beiden und Karl und Mike rede ich gleich über dieses Fahrzeug. Ein Porsche. Aber zunächst müssen wir natürlich hier Late Night typisch ein Stand-Up machen. Dazu bin ich vertraglich verpflichtet mit meinem Sender, Zusammengebaut TV. Sie bestehen auf flache Gags. Und Michael, vielleicht hast du davon gelesen, in Atlantic City wurde eine Immobilie des Ex-US-Präsidenten Donald Trump kontrolliert gesprengt. Endlich mal eine Meldung, die nicht für Zündstoff sorgt. Aber, aber um im Bild zu bleiben... Auch Trumps Präsidentschaft ist ja erst vor wenigen Wochen in sich zusammengefallen. <lacht> Kann man machen, oh, kleiner Blitzschatz. Hätte man schon ja, viel komm. früher machen sollen. Ja, na gut, äh, viel mehr als gestern einen. Jetzt kommen wir von, ähm, den, von einen in den Staaten hier nach Hamburg. Und zwar 200.000 weitere Hamburger bekommen eine Einladung zur Impfung. Also 200.000 Hamburger werden jetzt geimpft, haben eine Einladung erhalten. Das ist eine wirklich gute Nachricht in diesen Zeiten. Und wir bleiben in der Hansestadt. Das HSV-Präsidium erhielt eine Einladung vom Arbeitsamt. <lacht> ist natürlich die Frage jetzt, treten wir drei geschlossen auch zurück oder bleiben wir auf Sendung? Nein, ja, wir, wir bleiben, bleiben natürlich auf Sendung. <lacht> Wie ein Eckverdino. Nein, wir haben heute wirklich viel, viel geplant und ich kann schon mal anteasern, ihr wisst es ja, auf zusammengebaut.com berichten wir täglich über die bunten Steine aus Lego und gleich haben wir hier zwei Granaten zu Gast. Ich will aber noch darauf hinweisen, an sich wollten wir heute über diese Box reden, denn die habe ich beim Aufräumen gefunden und hier drin sind ganz viele alte Flyer und die gehen wir nächste Woche Donnerstag mit dem lieben Jonas durch. Ihr seht es, das ist ein prall gefülltes Schächtelchen, eine alte Box und das habe ich mal irgendwie so sortiert als Kind und ich habe es noch nichts gefunden und das machen wir erst auf nächste Woche 21 Uhr in Zusammengebaut Late Night. Michael, ich glaube dich nicht, auf. dass du, ja, ich, aber ich glaube nicht, dass du das als Kind sortiert hast. Wir kennen dich gut genug, das warst du nicht. <lacht> aber jetzt kann ich Ihnen mal zeigen, was ich als äh, A-Voll gebaut habe. Das ja. ist meine neue Hütte. Und zwar hat mir meine kleine Tochter gesagt, Papa, bau mal ein Haus. Hab ich dann, dann baue ich mal ein Haus und habe so die Steine genommen, die männer minder in den Kisten rumlagen, die um mich standen. Und äh, das Besondere ist, es gibt nur einen Raum. Ich kann das mal kurz zeigen. Ich habe quasi hier oh, modular, modular das ganze Haus. Ab, ja, modular. Guck mal an, dieses Geschehen, Michael. Kannst du dich damit anfreunden? Absolut, absolut. Es erinnert mich an... Ähm, kleine Ferienhäuser an der Ostsee zum Beispiel, Richtung Damp. Da ja. hast du wirklich so kleine Hütten stehen. Ähm, hat genau. für mich einen großen äh, Sympathiewert. Finde ich wirklich schön, wie du das gemacht hast, wie man sich Danke. so ein kleines Ferienhaus auch vorstellt. Ja, äh, Matthias, genau. wie gefällt es dir? Ja, super. Ne? Also, wie Michael das sagt, in Dänemark gibt es die kleinen Häuschen ja auch. Es fehlt jetzt noch der Innenpool und die Sauna, aber ansonsten ist das schon sehr gut gelungen. Und, und die ganz wichtig, Anlagen. eine äh, Gitarre sehe ich da, eine Elektrogitarre. Natürlich, natürlich. Die Toilette kommt dann irgendwie außerhalb, ein Plumpsklo. Und wie gesagt, das alles modular, modular, modular gelöst. Man kann das ganze Haus wieder draufstellen. Ja, da, fehlen quasi noch die Bet, die, da fehlen noch die Betten so in der ähm, Dach, 
oben drin. Das wäre dann ja. ja, stimmt, da könnte man noch was machen. Also ihr seht, ich baue damit weiter und habe auch Spaß mit Lego Stein. Und das Gute ist, Michael Matthias, wir haben heute hier zwei Lego Designer zu Besuch. Die kennen sich mit Lego Stein aus wie keine anderen. Und es wäre meine Frage, wollen wir mit den beiden gleich über den Porsche reden oder wollen wir erstmal so diesen, diesen Fragen anfangen wie, wie geht's und wie ist das Leben oder einfach über Bricks reden, Michael? Über Bricks? Lass uns über Bricks reden. So sieht's aus. Also, ich sehe schon im Chat sind auch einige dabei. Mich freut es, dass euch das Ganze hier ein bisschen gefällt. Dankeschön. Also ist nur ein kleines Häuschen, aber macht mir ja auch mal Spaß insofern. Will ich es jetzt wieder wegschieben, bevor Mike und Karl das sehen? Nicht, dass es noch irgendwelche Äußerungen gibt zu meinen kleinen bescheidenen Mox, den wir reden über diesen Porsche. Ich würde sagen, wir holen die beiden jetzt rein und mit einem dicken Applaus begrüßen wir heute Abend zunächst aus den USA eingeflogen den Lego-Designer. Carl Merriam, it's so good to see you. Hello. Carl Mad Dog, this is your name. It's so Hello. good to see you. Nice to see you, nice to be back again. I'm ready. Carl. And this is your first first time here in our late night show. You've been on assembled a few times, but this is your premiere on Zusammengebaut TV. How does it I feel to be actually part of a German late night show? But it was late at night last time I was on here. Yeah, but this is my other channel. You know, it's all it's it's very it's it's kind of tricky. We call this late night, even it's just 9 p.m. But is Carl, you a, know, there is on TV. It's TV. It's all live. Oh. It's on, It's everywhere. It's screening like you can see it on the moon right now, if you want to. Oh, wow. But there is an agreement, uh, Carl. I know um, we told your agent, hey, it would be so cool to have Carl back on the show. We haven't seen, I think, since April last year. And your agent agency told me, hey, okay, it's cool. But you know, there is only one chance to get Carl on the show. And you know what it is. Where's Mike? Exactly. So we have to bring it on. And Where Carl, is you know, I would love to talk with you the whole time because it's always very chilly, but we have to bring it on. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, my second favorite Lego designer of all time, Mike the Rocket Psyche. Hey. Oh. It's hey. so good to see you. Man, you're oh. there. So A beautiful introduction. It's like I always say, you know, I'm so happy to be here on Something About. Every time we talk, I always say, second favorite Lego channel. Jangbrick. Number one favorite Lego channel, of course. YouTube.com slash Lego. Click that bell, subscribe. We've got hundreds of hours of great content. But it's something about number three. Always. Oh. Don't, Don't forget really? to visit shop.lego.com. I'm back. I'm the... back. So I just have to explain a few seconds to our German listeners and viewers. Liebe Freunde da draußen, natürlich müssen wir jetzt Englisch reden, aber wir werden ab und an ein paar Sätze übersetzen, die Inhalte zusammenfassen. Ihr könnt im Chat natürlich mitdiskutieren auf Deutsch und auch nochmal Fragen stellen auf Deutsch. Wir werden ihn dann übersetzen und es wird dann auch noch eine Zusammenfassung auf zusammengebaut.com geben und die Highlights auf Englisch dann nochmal auf Assembled. Also wir reden jetzt Englisch, das ist vertraglich auch mit Marc und es, es ging, ging nicht anders. Also Karl hat gesagt, nur Englisch. Ich wollte Französisch, wollte er nicht. Insofern, also wir reden jetzt Englisch, aber es könnt ihr alle. Besser als ich, insofern ist alles gut. So I just explained uh, um, that we have to speak English, uh, Karl, because you don't want to speak French, which is a shame, I have to say. But you, uh, you could speak German to Mike and he could translate to me if you want. <laughs> I know, I know. And this is going to be the big final after three hours today. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm, it's, it's four oh, hours. That's great. When you guys uh, are by yourselves. In the end, uh, Mike will speak German for the first time live on television. This is going to be, this is going to be, be fun. So, but we have to talk about business here. Mike, we haven't seen since, I don't know, it feels like 10 years. First of all, how is life? Ah. <laughs> uh, Lively. <laughs> Lively. <laughs> no, when I say, I'll tell a personal story, okay, to get things going. On What's Saturday. Story? Okay. Can I guess which story it is? No, you're okay, not. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Me, on Saturday, it was minus 15 degrees here in Billund, Denmark. It was great. We have snow everywhere. We've been taking our kids sledding. Um, 
And I, Saturday morning on the weekend, I got up and I thought, I'm going to go for a run, keep myself in a little bit of shape so I can keep building Lego bricks for as long as possible. And I saw minus 15 degrees Celsius. That's cold. I'm going to put on some gloves. And then after I had the thought that I was going to put on some gloves, I went for my run without any gloves. Um, and I got frostbite on my hands. And it's very hard, been very hard <laughs> to build Lego these last few days because my right hand especially, actually today it's starting to feel better, but it's been very painful to build bricks. So I recommend anyone going out in the cold, protect your hands because they're very important for Lego building. That's I'm, what's going on. I'm that's why, so that, that was the point of this call, right? I'm so sorry to hear the story, and you know, Mike, because I love you, I have to play a little song for you, <laughs> and hope. <laughs> okay, okay, I will. I will play just a little tune here too. Mike, get well soon. We need your sets. Please take care next time. You idiot. No, no, no. It's it's so good to see you um, and to have you back on the show. But, Carl, um, I've seen some, some images of some colleagues of yours, and it was really cold in Denmark, too. So you didn't go out and, and had a run. and uh... I, I don't go outside. I've, <laughs> I've up, uploaded my mind into my computer, so I'm completely digital now. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is perfect, Michael. So I mean Michael. Uh, um, you haven't been um, in Billund, right? What well, Mike Zaki? He lives there. No, 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 no. I don't. No, no, no. Not not Mike. Not Mike Zaki. It's it's, it's See, this answer, guy answer, there. Michael. Michael. I've, I've, also Michael. We we have two Michaels on the show, which is I, kind of I, 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 I grew I up. At, Danish border, so so I've been in Billund, yes, of course, but uh, it's a long time ago. So Matthias, l last time you've been to Billund, it was like two years ago, right? Yeah, yes. So I ask you because there's a special reason. Next mm -hmm. time we go to Billund, we have to drive a Porsche. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. then we will we will just yes. you know show Mike. How the real Porsche looks like. Looks it very similar or not? We can discuss then in Belond, in the snow. But again, we have to start to talk about this, this car. Because I mean, I haven't, I mean, I've seen the real one, but I haven't, um, I have, I don't, I don't have any car, a uh, bigger car in my garage. So I have built with Lego bricks. And I have to say, uh, Mike, um, with the great opportunity to build. The car both. So Matthias did the review for Zusammengebaut. I can show you just oh. two or three images because you just Ooh. mentioned this. Show. Oh, Ooh. there's also the Ooh. I will, I will show it. It's a classic 911. Yes. You have not built, yes. you have not built them all. Really nice. Really nice. Three oh. and yes. yes, that works. Ah, perfect, Mike. And now I can show you the images of the official sets uh, Matthias did. So he did images in the snow. And I just want to show you snow again, Mike, because you love snow so much and the cold. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> here, here, here we go. So again, Matthias did a lovely review uh, of his car and uh, took it outside. Yeah. And here we, here we see the car. Matthias, before we talk about this car, finally, we have two awesome Lego designers here in the, in the chat. What is your personal opinion about the new Porsche set? Oh, it's great. It's really great. I do love it. Love it. Yes. Okay. And Michael. <laughs> so our Michael. Our uh, Michael. My, 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 my Michael. Not your Michael, my no, Michael. Michael. So he's What's... he's not actually my Michael, but you know we are not married. <laughs> I guess like I just before. assume. I just assume from now on you're not talking to me. That's fine. <laughs> yes. No, we, we will later <laughs> on. But um, so my Michael in Vienna, what do you think of this car? It's uh, I like the car. It's uh, I, I like to see how the, um, the the curvy style of a Porsche um, is realized with um, 
the bricks blocks yes yeah. and um that's that's cool okay so now i'll give you my opinion mike and i know you're always kind of afraid because yes. <laughs> let's 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 really dive in now because uh, you know our history first time we've met we talked about your carousel and i told you back in the day like four years ago it's a very cool set but it's not safe for the kids i know where this and, is going. And, oh, and, and, Mike, and you not know again, not again you know what is what is <laughs> the end of the story the carousel is now part of my new konyo city because i mean there's a pandemic outside who cares really just enjoy the ride have fun the mini figures can do whatever they want because i know how the life can be if there's a pandemic so i really I, i don't i don't care anymore it's a lovely set i rebuilt it it's in my city it's part of my city and now I can give you my opinion because i built it on my own and it was a really great building experience i had so much fun to build it and i'm not a big car fan in, in specific But what I love here are how smooth the doors are, how you can open it. I really like great. it. Yes. Um, I like the 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 whole um, model from this angle, from from the back. Everything really seems to be perfect. But but there's really one thing I don't like, and you can explain to me now why we have so many studs on the back. <laughs> this is always the thing you know me it's always about the stats i mean i know it's not uh, stats on top here and you use so many great elements we have two new elements here by the way this one yeah. is new we have this one here in front so everything looks perfect this is my in a, if you my top three cars of all time in a, in a second but it's it's really a lovely car the only thing i was wondering first time i saw the images Why are there so many stats? I mean, I guess because of the elements, but now you can tell us. So that back bumper is uh, one of the more complicated parts of the build of the car. Um, and if I was going to do this without studs, then I would need to use um, the, let's see, I think that's a two by two by eight or two by ten i think it's a two by ten i would need to use five of the two by twos two studs and with only two studs on top and it just would have added a lot of complexity on a part of the car that was already very complex so i chose to just leave the studs because i think studs that's kind of part of the lego dna and we have them on either side of that bumper already so i just thought it looked cool and i think Sometimes we try really hard to to hide the studs, but I think sometimes it's okay to let them be and let them be seen because they are a big part of the Lego system, if you know. A fairly important, one of the two more important parts of the Lego system <laughs> is the studs. I so, think um, if, I uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I believe that I told Mike to do that. Don't take credit. I'm not taking credit. I'm taking blame. Oh, thank you. This Please. was actually the, the back was an area that I had a couple of different versions because at one point, the area right beneath that bumper where you have the two by two bricks, um, the two by two by two bricks with slope, that originally was built upside down with a, the, three by six by one cockpit element and it was slotted in all weird to create a little more just this tiny little extra space in the engine compartment which turned out to not really be necessary um so so when when we're making a model we're we're in the kind of a constant balance of uh one how like how accurate or beautiful can we make it let's say and that, and i should really shouldn't even say beautiful because you could say that lego studs are beautiful it's kind of depends on your perception let's just say how accurate can we make it to the source material how complex will the build be and then the third thing is how stable will the model be both in building and also when finally assembled so we need to balance all three of these things throughout the design process and come to the right level between them all to make the model as as perfect as we can and it's not you can't just say 
oh, the, the most important thing is the beauty of it. The most important thing is the stability of it. The most important thing is the simplicity of it. They all, it's all about striking the right balance for what is my, what is my target audience for this product? What will they appreciate as the correct balance of these things that will make the ultimate experience in the end? So that's why they're studs. So basically, uh, Andreas, Mike's telling you that you thinking the studs shouldn't be there is wrong. Yeah, I'm aware of that. And thanks for, translating, my, thanks for translating for me. I, <laughs> I don't. I, don't I, you, Mike, I mean, normally, you know, I I love to speak to you for hours and discuss sets and say this this is good, this is not good. This is actually the only thing. The only aspect of this car, the only little detail, I'm not totally in love with. Everything mm -hmm. else, is, it is it is so good looking, even the colors inside. And, and I especially like this one because there is one issue with the uh, turbo. I, I I wouldn't say I don't like it. I, I don't like it, but there is only one thing when you when you look at the roof of the turbo, it's always the same look because I mean <laughs> it's it's not. You, you, the fourth. You know what? Yeah. I, this yes, is what you need to build. Yes, exactly. Turbo Targa. Turbo yes. Targa. This, <laughs> the, which one is the, this is this is the Targa, right? Yes. Yeah. Is, yeah. So I I mean the the um the roof of a turbo. I can I can just show you, and this is the only issue. You know, I think oh because it looks very similar to the other cars you did recently. Uh, this image I can I can share with you right now, and then I'm done. And then the other other guys can can speak to you. Um, it is it is actually this image here. You know, the roof looks always kind of the same because I think there is no way, uh, or you you should invent a new part or something, new element. You know what I what I mean, Carl? What? It's, it's the same you don't know what I, what, what I mean. He he figured out the perfect way to make a car roof, and he did yeah. it again. Here you can I would see. Say so. Actually, the thing that is the most similar between these two cars is the front windshield, um, yeah. which I went away from for some time in the development of the model. I was actually, uh, my original plan on this car was to use the uh, windshield of the um, the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, which we'd recently created, um, because I thought it added a cool, uh, a cool curved shape. And then I thought, oh, I can just stack that right down on the car and I don't need to do any funny, any funny angles with the windshield. It will be great. But it was just, um, it was too wide. So this, like the roof of this car is 12. Sorry. I don't know where my camera is. The roof of this car is 12. <laughs> and, uh, that the windscreen for the Ecto-1 is 14. So it's just a bit to, and, and I actually, I built versions of this car that were two modules wider to accommodate for that wider windscreen. Okay. And it just looked so, the, the windshield was kind of cool, but the proportions of the car were much more important to me to get right than that windshield. So um, yeah, that's why we go with this one, similar to the Mustang. But, but yeah, I mean, the, roofs, the roofs are similar because I love this piece, this bow the yeah. on the roof. Yeah. Exactly. That's an element that we made when we made the Ford Mustang, and it's a part that I had been proposing since 2014 to be introduced into the Lego system. Um, because this one, for two reasons, one is the we have the one by ten bow here, so it has those two extra plates that come off the front. Sorry, you're not going to really see it that well. Hang on. <laughs> it's got two of those disgusting studs on it, so Mike yeah, took them yeah. off. <laughs> me the Stayed them right off. Oh, I uh, so, no, no studs. Right. <laughs> so this one has those two extra studs, which are is super useful sometimes, but other times um, it kind of gets gets in the way because this piece then becomes you know minimum ten modules you sometimes don't want to build something so long. Uh, so it can be a little bit of a trouble. So that's why we made the two by eight version, which if you look on the Porsche 911, the roof is too short to actually use this piece. So um, where was I going with that? 
Yeah, and then and then the reason we make it two by eight instead of one by eight is now these pieces aren't like they're not conflicting, right? So we can have both versions exist in the system and serve different roles. You know, uh, Carl, um, it's it's always tricky for me to say something uh, which is which is not you know the the. It is always hard to me to to say something about a car which is not good, because. This is this is a perfect car, you know. I, yeah. The people come on, ask them questions like, "Why is it white?" Because white looks perfect. It, it, is, <laughs> it is, you know, it, it, it's it's just a perfect car. I love it. It's very stable. It's a great building experience. And people okay. mention, "Why are there red uh, bricks here?" Take, I say, "Come on, it, 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 who cares?" For for me, it's really, Mike, Carl. I give you my top three favorite Lego cars of all time right now here we go number three awesome car Beautiful. awesome car it is it is really kind of a perfect car i love it it looks stunning i like the blue it's it's so much fun it's awesome number two uh -oh. this new body here <laughs> awesome car again i mean who cares if you start? I was kind of kidding, you know. It's it's perfect. I mean, what? It's 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 awesome. It's perfect looking. It's a masterpiece. Actually, my my my, my daughter put a few mini dolls there. So like, what are you doing? Give this to me. It's my car. You know, it's really like this. <laughs> Don't play with those I, toys. It's awesome. And now number one, <laughs> the best Lego car of all times, of all time, the best Lego car. Wait, can we guess or no? The act to one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, your your camera is really far away. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So the act to one, the small one. Marcus by... Bessa, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm of course just kidding. I mean, it's a great car. It's a minifigure car. Lego idea. So this was just a little late night thing here. I haven't built the Ecto-1, the big one yet, I have to say, and I still have to do it. Um, so this is another car released, I think, in October last year, which is really cool, too. But um, Mike and Carl, there are many questions of the readers here, and Matthias and Michael. So my Michael, if you have questions, oh, there's the big one. I, could, I can show in a second. Uh, it's lovely, too. Maybe if we have time later on, we can talk a few minutes about this one, too, uh, in comparison, yeah. You know, you know what, Carl? Um, I can I can tell you something right now because we're here and talk. And uh, when there's when we have the Act One in this scale, which looks really stunning and cool, is there a reason to create a bigger one? Are you asking me? Yes, yes. As a Lego fan, not as a. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I've I've built both of them, and I love both of them. They're they're I mean they're a completely different build, right? I know you're building you're building the same thing, but the building <sighs> experience is fantastic for both. Yeah. So I I mean I I think it's fun not to have different ones. I, mean, I think I think the cool thing is to have uh, different things at different scales, not the same thing at the same scale over and over again. Yeah. So I will build the big Ecto-1 also. And uh, right now, mm. I have to say, this one is my favorite car. It's really stunning. So we have a few questions here from our readers. And we'll start with this one. And Mike, uh, please, um, you have to answer like one minute because I have to go away for a few seconds. What is, okay. what is the secret behind the shields here? So we have the, the number plates, I think it's, it's called. We have this one. This is the, the German one in yep. front and in back. So there yep. are two printed tiles scu 6000 what is the story behind i mean it's stuttgart and cu like cu maybe and we have two more so we have of course psyche which is your name mm -hmm. and, oh, <laughs> and another one <laughs> i think it's it's kind of china asia something so carl and mike you have two minutes to explain all the secrets all the fun stories behind those printed elements I'll be back very soon. I never explain Easter eggs. Wait, there, but there's there's no stories that are yeah. that are involving those. That's top secret. Oh. Um. Uh, let me think. What do I want to say about those number plates? I'll say about the I'll say about the German one because no one's ever going to figure that out. 
Oh boy. The German one is actually um, there's some old marketing materials from Porsche around the 930 specifically, which is the turbo version of the car that featured that number plate, SCU 6000. Um, so that's that's why we have that on the the turbo. And then uh, when we were making the car, we thought we we were talking with Porsche and they just said, oh yeah, this is, uh, it, it would be cool to include some extra number plates. And so I'm from New York and I wanted to put a New York license plate on it with my initials because it's just fun to do. Um, and then uh, the Porsche historian, Jörg Tilo, who worked with us, suggested that for a third number plate, we would do Japan because the turbo car, the turbo version, uh, the 930, actually, as far as he told me, was was a significant step in Porsche really getting a foothold in the Japanese car market. Um, something about like the in Japan, they're really kind of there's a there's a big appreciation for like miniaturized technology. I don't, that's probably not the right way to say it, but like the turbocharging of the car is kind of like a very elegant, um, minimal solution to adding power that was really appreciated in Japan. So that car helped them to get a foothold in Japan. Um, so that's why we thought that that third number plate is a Japanese number plate. Um, and we also just thought, you know, w when we make cars, we're always doing Western license plates. Why don't we, why don't we start to maybe put some in from other parts of the world? So, yeah, I think it's cool with Japan. And then I will not say what any of the numbers mean because those are Easter eggs. And if I tell right. the Easter eggs, no one can discover them. <laughs> okay. P five one AK three. It's because I have three sons. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that what a story! What a story! I thought actually you have seven, <laughs> but it's <laughs> three is, is is fine also. By the way, while I was doing my business, I was dreaming, and suddenly I thought, "Oh my goodness, is there Mike Saige in my office?" <laughs> but this is another another story. So we have this secret, and now um, we have to share the lovely story you told us in the designer video, in the official one, Carl. Uh, you were mentioning your good buddy Mike here um, is a guy who's mean, building all the you're, time. You're Michael? No, uh, I mean <laughs> you're Michael. So you're kind of you're Michael. You're the man you're in love with. We all know oh, this. Yes. We yeah, yeah, want yeah. To <laughs> <laughs> this was a question, friend? right? Or was the, the what, question were you, missing? Were you asking a question? Yes, kind of. Uh, I, I was Something wondering... Easter you eggs. know, the lovely story you told in the designer video about Mike while you were painting and others were doing any art and he was still building. I think this was the, the birth of the set. Yeah, no, I was I was working on my old pianos. <laughs> oh, no. Here goes the <laughs> piano. <laughs> Why not? Why not? All right, but... <laughs> <laughs> you said why not? <laughs> I love my piano. <laughs> yes, it's it's great. It's a, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. So we, so we have um, our chief marketing officer, Julia Golden, hmm. when she came to Lego, uh, actually went, oh, this all ties together. Because the first time that I met her, she came in, she was, she was trying to learn about, she just started at Lego. She was trying to really deep dive into what is, what are all these product development people doing? What's going on here? What is what is the details of how this all works? And she actually came to the model review for the Volkswagen Beetle. Um, I got it up here. <laughs> so at the end of the at the end of the development of a model, we have uh, what we call like our our model review, where we sit down with uh, with some other designers and a building instructions developer and maybe a model coach or something. And we build through the model and uh, Julia wanted to understand like, okay, what is like, understand some of the finer details of what it is we're doing in product development. So she came to uh, maybe an hour of the model review and built some of the first layer of the beetle. So that was really cool. Um, but she implemented this thing called Fabulab Friday, 
where the last Friday of every month is a day where we are just, we're not meant to work on our kind of current tasks, whatever those may be. We're meant to do something that could be like a creative outlet, like painting. Carl said like painting or- I did not say painting. Like painting or- I did not. Painting. You, I think it said painting. Okay, Mike, but some Mike, Mike decided to build some Lego stuff. Something and like I was painting. doing something more sensible, learning how to restore and properly regulate antique piano equipment. Good job. Painting. <laughs> painting. And you decided to build actually this car, kind of. So, yeah, but that this is, I mean, this is the, the, the question to Carl, because you've been in the designer video, so you, you've been involved, but you told the viewers like me, oh my goodness, it was so complicated and it was so weird what was going on. You gave it back to Mike, to your Mike, so your Michael. So, have you been involved in this final product? So what is, I mean, when we remember so many sets, like you've been the genius behind the rocket because the top of the rocket, this was your idea. I mean, I'm technically the lead designer for the whole rocket. So it's, I signed the paperwork. I think so too. And when, 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 when you think of the other of the I, diner. I, I was I mean, there so and I signed the paper. I signed it. I don't know what that was, but that's you, not part you, of the model. You were there no. too. <laughs> yeah, so, so the rocket is yours, Carl. It's totally fine. We, next time we will introduce you as Carl the Rocket Merriam. It's totally fine. But Ooh, when we think cool. of this car now, and we have so many questions left from our mm -hmm. readers, I will I will give them to you all in a second. Which part of this car is yours? Well, I'd say there's uh, there's a lot. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? The, the studs. Oh yeah, it was, it was the studs on the back. That was my idea. <laughs> um, well, I think it, it's actually I wouldn't I wouldn't say necessarily one specific part, but I do think um, it, it was kind of an interesting process because you know we were going, we were working from home more more often than not over the last year, and there was a lot of times where you know me and Mike would talk to each other on Teams and then show each other what we're working on. And it's actually crazy because it's easier to understand what the other person is doing if you show a digital model over a video stream and say, look at this part, look at this part, and then I'm thinking of doing this there, where, where, where would this fit in? And so there was just a lot of that, like, talking to each other about stuff. And I like to say that I'm Mike's muse, so I don't really help him directly. But if I'm nearby, he does a better job. I, I assume it's because he's trying to impress me, but I don't actually know. <laughs> Matthias, um, we've been to Berlin a few times and we did interviews with those guys and there's a lot of energy between those, right? Am I right? It's, yeah, it's, kind, of, yeah. it's kind of love. It's, it's love is in the air. It's really this, Think about this... uh, the interview in the Lego house. Oh, yeah. Ago? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah about like that. 100 years ago or something. It was lovely. I watch that video sometimes. <laughs> Michael, you know, <laughs> Michael, you know, in the beginning, I really tried hard to ask questions and, and be the guy who asked the questions, you know, like mm -hmm. and, and it was it, it was totally mess because now it's a new running gag. Oh, there it starts. <laughs> um, but my Michael, when you look at this car and you have two Lego designers here on the stream for free, I don't have to pay anything. It's awesome. I mean, for free, yes. Match, like three hours for free. When you look at this car, what would you like to ask those people here oh well, it's not about uh, just this car but um i would like to to know about the the passion of building cars designing cars um what do you like about it or is it uh, the case that lego says uh, mike you have to build a new car or is it really a passion um and you you are trying to figure out how to um, make it better in, uh, in the, the next uh, car? Or is it an idea you got when you see it on the on the road um, driving by and say, hey, I want to buy uh, to, to buy and, and build this car? Or um, how, how does this work? Um, 
that's all over the place. I think. Uh, I don't. I'm not particularly like uh, very passionate about cars. If I'm honest, uh, I think they're cool. And when I was when I was a kid, my brothers and I we were mainly trying to build like um, kind of James Bond style cars, like but for minifigures. So we would add like spikes on the wheels and. Uh, machine guns and stuff like that. Um, but I, I just love building Lego models. So I don't. Oh, I really, couldn't, I couldn't care too much less about what the actual subject matter is of the model. Just making something from Lego and trying to make it fun to build and cool to play with is so great. And I, so I think cars in particular are more fun for me because they have so many moving pieces. Like um, one of the models I've made is this old Trafford football stadium, um, which was, again, it, it was okay, fun to make, but but when it's just a, like a building that's just standing there, um, I get less excited about that. So I think that would be, I could say, that's where my passion is, is in uh, things that are meant to move. Yeah, those small little um, parts where where there's a little function or something, it just makes it more yeah. interesting, both to build and also to play with at the end. See how it works. Yeah, and it it just there's there's something about a Lego model, uh, feeling like a toy that is really important for me. Um, and I think the the buildings are great. I'm not saying that I actually have the big Hogwarts castle sitting right here, and it looks amazing. Um. The buildings are really fun, but they just, for me, they lack that little bit of, like, uh, the real feeling of a toy. And, I like, I think when you when you pick this car up and then you are you set it down, like, you can't really drive around with it like you would with a, a small uh, Lego car, like a real toy car. But when you're building it and when you're looking at it, you can imagine that you can do these things and it, it, you can, yeah, it's almost like pretending that it's a toy. I don't know. I don't think I'm making much sense, but I love, I love doing vehicles. I love the complexity of cars, especially like trying to get in things like the steering or the functions of the doors, just all the way, the, the way all of the complex curves uh, and details come together. And, you know, you have like, you have, areas with a lot of small detail like the headlights and the bumper and then you have big overall shapes like the curve of the shoulder there's just there's a really nice variety of uh things to make in a car that make it really fun the mix of form and function and uh overall shapes and small details just make them a really fun experience to build the first car that i actually built at lego was a volkswagen beetle um that I made when I, when I started at Lego, this tire, uh, I think it came out in a 2013 Technic truck that had like a, I don't know, it was a six wheel truck with like a dumpster on the back or something. It was red and red and yellow truck with a blue dumpster. But when I started at Lego, that wheel was not uh, that wheel that wasn't public yet. So I saw that in the element stock and I just thought, Oh, neat. That's a cool, it's a cool size wheel. Cause it's bigger than the wheel of the camper van. Um, but it's smaller than the wheel that was used on the really big VW beetle from, I think 2008 or maybe 2006. I don't know the big one. And I, I immediately thought, what if we built a beetle using that tire, that wheel instead? So I built one of those. I just left it behind my desk and I think my boss just got the idea from that that I was into building cars so they asked me to make the Ferrari F40 and then they've just been asking me to work on cars ever since so <laughs> that's the story of why I make the cars so but the there's other question, yeah. the real Thank question you. about designing the uh, the Porsche is Mike why did you do such a good job <laughs> I like to make cool Lego models. Sorry. <laughs> there is one thing that I wish I could have included in this car that I didn't do, and that is the door stop mechanism from the Mustang. 
this car doesn't have that. I wish that I had figured out how to do it, but there the space in there around the steering wheel and then the the support needed for the windscreen and the front wheel arch and everything. Uh, it's just really tight and adding in that those extra hinges was going to make it super, super complicated. And I couldn't figure out a great way to do that. So these doors can swing further open than I would like. And I know someone, what you mean. If yeah. someone can think of a stop for those, that would be cool to see. But that's my that's my biggest regret. But right next to that is the part that I love the most, which is these wing mirrors. Um, and that's so this is like opposite car of the Mustang because on the Mustang, my biggest regret is the wing mirrors. Um, because they're so like they are uh, they're they can do like this, and then they're fairly easy to just break off. And I, and because they're they stick out of the car and they're kind of prominent, they're just they're just kind of they're always in the wrong position. Yeah, at least I find that. I'm I'm always having to go like oh go in there and ah uh, yes okay okay this is looking good and it's just annoying. And I wanted to make a wing mirror that would just be in its right position and be stable. And so when I saw this new piece uh, that was made for the buildable minions, this this three by three curve, I thought if I can build that in sideways into the door, that will make a great uh, a great wing mirror with the ingot on it. And we were able to do it. So this, yeah, that's my favorite part actually. It is it is awesome. And uh, you mentioned the mirror; it was falling down ten seconds ago <laughs> at mine car. So it's it it looks. It looks really stunning. So, uh, Mike and Carl, maybe you think, okay, only this guy here, myself, is asking the stupid questions. But there is one issue Matthias wrote in his review. And you can ask Mike right now what is going okay. on in the cockpit and what is yeah. wrong with the wheel. Matthias, you, it's you, mean, you mean why, why is the steering wheel not in the middle of the instruments? Oh, I've been caught. <laughs> I warned you about that, Mike. Don't you remember? Oh, man. Good question. <laughs> I said, I said to you, I so, said those Germans, they're going to notice. Yeah, that, that's German. We love Carl. We love yeah. Carl. Carl, you know. <laughs> so the reason that the steering wheel is not in the center of the clocks is because I want it for me it was a choice between is it centered on the clocks or is it centered on the seat and i okay. chose to have it centered on the seat was okay. it the right choice i don't know mm -hmm. i mean it's not even perfectly centered on the seat to be honest but yeah i we we actually tried a version where we built the we built um like i don't know how i say it there would be uh, five of the one by one rounds with the print for the clocks. So like the like the actual 911 would have the five clocks. Um, and then there, there would be a plate kind of sticking out the side of the dashboard for that fifth clock. And then it would be centered on the steering wheel. Boom, 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 boom. Um, but it just, because then they needed to be raised up one more plate and then that like that bit sticking out of the side just it didn't look that nice it, it made the whole dashboard look kind of messy so in the end we chose to go with it a little bit offset um you can try that build with the with the one sticking out the side if you think it looks better but i i prefer it to all be in that one line so and then we use that the reason i use okay. that center no i'm it's a it's a it's a it's a great thing to notice because that was actually um, that was the last part that we worked on with Porsche was how do we get the dashboard? Um, mm -hmm. And I think of all of the things that was the part that they wish I could have done even better of all the things in the car. That was the one where they're like, we understand the compromise you've made. We really wish it could have all five and be centered. Um, 
So, so the reason that I did the like the two clocks on the side and then that print is then we still technically have five dials. They're not quite the right shape, but there are five. So it's a uh, it's close. It's an eighty percent solution. <laughs> no, it's five dials. Four dials is eighty percent solution. Oh, it's a seventy percent solution. I guess it's four and a half dials, so it's a ninety percent solution. 85. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, is, it is fine. It is fine. And um, so we ask our readers to ask and send some questions. And one I think I received two or three times. You're using this element here in front, which I think was introduced with the stadium you just mentioned. So now we have this in, in trans clear, so the, the lights, yes. but we won't see the same lights here in the back. My guess is because of the building structure, it wasn't possible to use um, this element in the back also, but we're the designers here, so tell us about it. Why, is there, uh, why isn't there a trans clear piece in the back as well of the car? Um, the, so, so that shape is too big to use in the back. It's the wrong radius. So I couldn't use the exact same one. Um, so then it was, we, we had two choices was either we build the light from smaller transparent bits, um, or we use the solid color part. And then because the other lights in, like that center, the, the lights on the back of this car, the real car are a little bit, I don't want to say weird. They're just interesting because you have cool. this center. They're a little bit cooler. A little bit cool because you have this center section that yeah. Yeah, that says Porsche, and that's the same material as the brake lights, which are on either side of it, but it's not a light. Does that make sense? It's just a plastic yeah. thing. It's that transparent red plastic, but it's not actually a light. Um. And so we wanted to have that in regular red. And then we wanted to match that kind of with the brake lights. Uh, so yeah, it was, I mean, the thing that I'm feeling, the more that I look at the car is maybe I should have made this one by two tile in white instead of transparent. That might have looked even better. Mm. But, but yeah, the reason is just I, for me, it was more important to match the shape than to have the transparency the element. And then in the front, I thought, because like maybe I could have made those ones also the opaque orange, but then I thought because the headlight is transparent, it would be a little bit weird for the front that the headlight is transparent and then the blinker is not. And also the, the, this blinker element on the front is a little bit larger than it should be. So if we make it bright orange, it stands out just way too much. Yeah. But uh, I was I was wrong. Uh, of course, it's uh, trans orange, not trans clear. But you know yeah. what I what I mean. And you know when when I look here on the back, I only see stats, so I don't I don't care. Uh, but but beside that, um, I would love to ask you. We have five more minutes to go here. Um, Carl, what is your favorite part of this car? So what do you like most about it? Is there anything you like? Anything? <coughs> I really, I like that new piece that we made. I call it the tongue because if you put both of them next to each other, it makes a tongue shape. Yeah, you mean the there are two new elements? Oh, it just on the, on the on the back for the rear shoulder. This one. If you, you mean this one? If you, yeah, this if one. you take both of them, if you take both yeah. of them off and put them together, it makes a perfect tongue. Oh, I and haven't we, tried this, no. but here we go. You mean this element here? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, th I think that we that that's been something that's been a problem with any kind of classical classic type cars for a long time. Is that there's no, there there it is. There it is with Mike. He's got it. So it's been, big, it's, it's been a big problem getting that transition in the shoulder, right? Because it, it's it's very hard to get it to go to be again, curved Mike, this way and Mike, also sloping the other way. It, can you can you show the show it again? Show yeah, it again. 
I'm sorry. Those are all our, our hardcore um, fans that are really into the kind of the details of the parts. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> so tell us about this element, uh, Mike. Um, was it designed especially for this car or has it been around and you thought, hey, this is going to be cool for the set? Carl was just telling you. No. So we, um, when, when we were making the car, we had a lot of different solutions for that back shoulder. Um, but everything that we built from existing pieces just, it got so, so messy when the line from the headlight all the way back to the rear axle was just perfectly straight and clean. And then we were breaking that up. Um, originally, I was taking the, uh, the what is it called? Six by 10 by two cockpit element. I don't know. I can't think of it's It's in the back of the Batman Scuttler Mac. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know how else to describe it. All right. But I, was, I was taking this part. It's like a, it's a cockpit that has like a curve this way mm. down the front. And then on either side, it has sections that are at 45 degrees that come along at a mm. curve. And then it tapers in at the end at like a one to two. What is that? 33 degrees, something like that tapers in um and then it has a bow cut out from either side a one by six bow so i was taking that and i was cutting it in half and using that to build the backs of the cars but then you would have this transition from the half circle to the 45 degree chamfer so you would just have this gross step in the back of the car uh and at the time we were working with uh the, he's in the designer video this guy yoel uh, one of our element designers who actually, when I, when I was hired at Lego in uh, April of 2012, he was at the same hiring workshop as me. Uh, so we go, you know, and I go way back, but this is the first time we're collaborating directly on a project together. Um, but I was showing him what I was doing and he was like, let's make, he said, I like your ideas. I'm going to make a bow that goes in two directions, which is normally something that we don't do. If you look at most of our, uh bow elements the bow so like the curve is in one direction and then if we do something in another direction it's a slope um and he said i'm gonna make a bow that goes in two directions and it's gonna look great and i just said uh yoel um don't do that that's a bad idea it's not it's not gonna look good and i don't think we should make that piece and he was just like he just said whatever and he went off and made it and brought back these parts and we put them on the car and they just looked incredible the way all the shapes came together uh so that was the birth of that piece um it was the okay this is off the record it was the easiest time i've ever had of convincing someone to make two new elements like like when we, we can't just we can't just go around making parts there there's there's very strict rules when when you say i want to make a new element it's a it's a quite drawn out process to get the right approvals mm -hmm. not drawn out but like it's a complicated process because we're so protective of what is the lego system we don't want to just let any part into the lego system um and we also just we only have so much production capacity we can't just be producing uh one million different shapes um so people are very protective of when you say that you need to make a new part and this one i just put those parts on the car i showed it to the right people and they're just like yeah of course we need to do this. So it was amazing. Um, it was amazing how simple that was. Uh, but I wanted to say something cool about, oh, no, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> That's for a story for another time. Oh, we have just, time for yeah. one last question, Mike, because I'll, I'll ask um, Carl, so I have to, to ask you as well. And when you look at the whole masterpiece here, what is your favorite part of the whole time. Um, I already said the wing mirror is something that I really am very, very keen yeah. about. Um, the, I, the kind of like you were saying, Andres, I really, I like the way that the glass for the Targa roof worked mm. out. Um, yeah. And just like that the whole thing, the Targa bar and the glass 
are just built all together as one unit, I think is it's quite clean and simple in the end for something that could have been done in very complex ways. Um, but probably the thing I'm most proud of, apart from the wing mirrors, is the headlights. Um, when I, uh, this is a long story, I'm sorry, then we will be done. Um, when I first, when I made the first concepts for this car, I just built the headlights on directly straight. Um, so there was no angle to them at all. And the reason that I did that is I, I'll show you. There was uh when the, um, Oh, and look, now I'm going to open this cool box here and take out something. Oh. What's the sign of the this car? Okay. <laughs> look at this. I keep this in a box so I don't like to look at it too much. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is that the one you made when you were a kid? Yeah. <laughs> the S Martin. What? I don't even know if I can get it out of here. Here we go. Here she comes. Okay, when we made this car, I made these like super angled headlights, right? And the Aston Martin has this headlight, but because of the stud on the lights, it really, I mean, if I explain it to you, maybe you already see this, but once I say it, then you'll never unsee it. Like, it looks like kind of some terrified fish right like he's looking <laughs> he's looking up like oh oh no what are they gonna do to me <laughs> i can never unsee that when i I've look at this cars car. <laughs> too often with your kids <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> get me out of here i cannot unsee that and so i said if we if we do another car i'm just gonna make it's more important to me the direction that the lights are pointing. They need to point straight forward. And because of that stud, that is what's defining the direction that they're pointing. Uh, so the first version I built was just with the, actually the first few versions, I was just building the lights uh, straight onto the car. And then my, our, our coworker Sven, who's, um, he was hired into our team uh, in August of 2019, I think he started. He's uh, he is a Croatian Lego fan. Um, I'm sure you've met him. He's been at uh, yeah. he's been around. He's um, in the Masterpiece Gallery, right? Yeah, he was in the Masterpiece Gallery. I'm pretty sure. Um, he he was looking at the car and he was like, "It really," he said, "It really needs the angle of the headlights." I know it's a silly detail, but it really it's really important to Porsche. And so, because he was kind of prompting me so much to do it. I tried it out and I think it actually looks really great. And I'm really, I'm really proud of the solution on how we, how those lights get angled, like the way they get, they get held in place and the way that all the pieces match up around them to create that really, this really clean tight shape, I think is, it was the right decision to make. Um, mm, yep. That was actually one of the earliest parts that was like, okay, this is how we're going to do it in the final model, the way that all comes together with the, yeah, the funny bits inside. So it's a little sneak peek for anyone that hasn't built it. I looked at the instructions. Spoiler alert. A little no, on that back one. here. That's the spoiler. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Anyways, it's if you get two... Turbo Targa, that's the coolest one. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> the only issue with the Turbo Targa is this, you get this little gap. Uh, sorry, I'm bad at these camera tricks. See, see the little gap on the engine cover? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you would probably need to fill that and You could fill it in with a one-by-one -one plate. It's just because I haven't done any modifications besides swapping over the Targa roof to the turbo car. So uh, that's why that gap comes in. All right, but, Mike and Carl, I could talk with you for hours, you know that, but um, unfortunately I have to go. Um, no, uh, I'm just what? kidding. Andres, 
One, yeah, uh, one, Matthias? Yeah, one question, not not uh, of the Porsche, but one question to Carl. I look uh, the whole time to your shelf behind you, and I see, okay. is this, um, is this um, Edward with the scissor hands or scissor fingers? Yes, that? yeah, that's yeah. one uh, uh, mark I made uh, two, 2008, I think, when I made that one. Ooh. Wow. That looks great. It's on my it's on my Flickr page if you want to take a better look at it. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Lego. Shop.lego.com. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> the Porsche is out there. Um, you can buy it right now on Lego Shop wherever.com. You know the URL better than, than I do. Uh, it's a stunning car, it's a masterpiece. Uh, I love it. Um yeah. So I hope we see more cars in the future. It's a future thing. We won't talk about that. Um, Carl is out there with a lot of Super Mario stuff right now. So you're involved in this theme. Am I right? That's correct. Yep. So still go strong with Lego Super Mario. Um, it was so good to talk with you about this new set here. I love it. It's great. I will put it on my shelf here and maybe I will never earn um, a big one. But this is, I mean, this is even better. I mean, Lego Porsche. What else? <laughs> Should I should I want? Um, Michael and Matthias, thank you. So my Michael, thank you so much yeah. for being my, my here. Michael. Well. Michael, thank you. Michael, Thanks my Michael. Michael. Thanks, and, Michael. Uh, and uh, Mike promised us um, in the end he will speak German for a second and say goodbye to everyone. So now it's up to you. Uh, it's bedtime. So what would you tell your kids to go to bed because it's very very late right now in German. Sure. Okay, schönes Abend, meine Lieblings. Guten, gute Nacht und schlaf schön. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Carl and Mike, for being here in Thunderbolt Late Night. It was fun to talk to you. Um, please stay strong. Please, please stay healthy and whatever. And um, brick on. And we're going to see more lovely sets in the future. Das war zusammengebaut. Late Night am heutigen Abend. Wie immer, alle Infos auf zusammengebaut.com. Dort auch nochmal ein kleiner Bericht über die Dinge, die Mike und Carly heute erzählt haben. Wir sehen uns wieder in sieben Tagen, Donnerstag um 21 Uhr. Und wir alle sagen gemeinsam Tschüss und Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good Bye. Night. Bye. Bye.